let's kind of hop on into it. One thing you need to know for all of the pedals is that they require, almost all of them require power. There are very few that don't um, because they're passive electronics. Like for example, the only thing I have, let me show you. This guy right here is a volume pedal and that doesn't require power just because it's literally the, like the volume knob on my guitar, but it is at my feet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one doesn't, but there are volume pedals that do require power. So um, what's important is most pedals, most pedals, now there's a lot of exceptions, but most pedals take nine volt battery. Um, and nowadays more and more manufacturers are shifting away from actually having a port for the battery and you have to use either like a wall wart or in the case of like both of us with a full on pedal board, they also make accompanying things that is an actual power supply. It's like a brick that has individual ports. So it's like a big um, surge protector almost for your, uh, for specifically for your instrument. So. And I'm showing one up at the top uh, on my board there. Um, just so you know Let me pin that up there. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah, there, his is currently living outside of the pedal board. That, that thing at the top, uh, the pedal power two, which is the one I just had. And I opted for a different one finally, uh, just to get a couple of extra ports so I could connect a couple of extra. So pedals. why is it, why is the power important? Because mostly because if you plug the wrong power into a pedal, you could severely damage it. Sometimes you could ruin it. So, all you really need to know is that most new pedals come with a power supply that you could use uh, or tell you exactly what you need. So you just need to pay attention when you buy it uh, and make sure that you're, it would be just like plugging a television in with the wrong power cord or things as well. It, it would either not work because it doesn't have enough power or you'd fry it because it has too much. It has to be just right Goldilocks to, to be, uh, to work. So, um, Let's go ahead and hop in and show them some actual pedals, huh? Yeah, sounds good. Um, so how we organized the PDF is in, you know, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz, kind of just generic dirt is what uh, people call that sometimes too. Dynamic and utility pedals, which is really a catch-all because a lot of things could fall under that. Modulation. Um, which we're going to go over a little bit today, and then time-based effects. And finally, just some ideas of multi-effects units. Um, I have at least one multi-effect on my board. Are any of yours a multi-effect? Um, not, not traditionally speaking, no. I, I have things that have like secondary functions, which are pretty okay. cool. No multi-effects, yeah. Yeah, and when I say multi-effect, there's literally anything that does more than one thing. So, you know, technically some of those things you could argue are a multi-effect, and technically mine is two distortions in one pedal. So it's like, on the scale of multi-effects, it's not. You know what, then? I, I, I take it back. I got I have a combined uh, delay reverb pedal. Yeah, there. so that totally counts, yeah. Because you could get your bang for your buck of only buying one thing, and you get two different effects going on. Um, now, true multi effects, neither of us have any of those to show you today, but there are a lot of examples. Those can be all kind of all in one solutions. But Jesse, why don't you show us a little bit of overdrive first? Sure. So, this uh, first pedal up right. Let me pin your video. Up right here. All right, tell us about it. What do you got? That's a, it's sort of a multi stage. Um, overdrive to distortion. So right now it's on already, as you can see from the blue light being on, which is kind of like a, a clean boost. You can't even really tell that it's on. But as soon as I flip it into the second mode here, you're going to hear a pretty drastic difference. still it's still pretty responsive to my touch and to my playing right so whereas that can go all the way up to uh something I'll, I'll flip it to the next mode you'll hear again a pretty stark difference cool 
All right. We're That's probably cool. <laughs> but uh, there's one more mode on that. I'll bypass that for now. Yeah, we're already clipping Zoom. So sure. uh, one thing to note is like, it's going to sound rough through Zoom. That's just like the way it goes, but it still sounds awesome to hear uh, hear those different gain stages going from basically a clean effect. And that's what a lot of people use uh, Overdrive for is barely, because the original use is mimicking the sound of a tube amplifier getting pushed really hard. By pushed, I mean you know cranking the settings. And it has a natural compression and a natural... Um, overdrive if you will so uh, yeah so there's overdrive and we kind of got a example of both there's a distortion and fuzz we have three different examples on um, the PDF uh, all of which you know that's we have owned all three of those things I haven't I have a tube screamer in one of my pedals the double overdrive is one side is uh, a transparent overdrive and the other is a clone of a tube screamer uh, Jesse's first pedal was this DS1 distortion and that's that sound of like the heavy part of smells like teen spirit um, and then fuzz that's kind of what we just got there that's where the signal gets totally overloaded and turns also almost into like a flat line like a square and that's the famous for like you know Jimi Hendrix uh, Jack White the Rolling Stones have some examples like a... And you can hear there's a lot of noise going on as soon as I turn that on, but that's the, the same sound of like... But the cool thing about th that fuzz in particular is when I roll it down on my volume, it's still roughly the same volume, but the distortion has gone down. We can get. This one totally gets totally unruly. It has a modulation switch and it turns into like this gated. So those are fun. Uh, a lot of guitar players will spend lots of money on just overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. Um, and it wouldn't be wrong if you stop there. Typically, uh, they are one of the first things in the chain in a typical pedal order just because it can sound crazy to put things like time-based effects that are affecting you know how long things are sounding before it. Like Jesse said, though, that can be really cool too. So there's no wrong way to do it. Uh, you find out what you like, but... Right. Uh, on my board as well, I'm gonna show you some of my utility pedals. And then Jesse will show you his. Uh, no pedal board is not complete without the yield tuner. I can tune, and you can see, got the little strobe right in front of me. Uh, that is running straight out of my um, volume pedal here and let me show you how that works real quick I'm in a kind of weird spot so the volume and with some delay and reverb you can get some crazy Absolutely. Um, 
And I, I just wanted to share, you know, Chris is sharing that he's got this, um, this volume pedal that he's controlling with the foot, which is a really nice way to do it. Um, just as an alternative example, I have this guy on my board here called the Tac Decay. Um, this is also a volume pedal, but it's sort of more designed after like a, a synth synthesizer where you can, contr um, can control the attack and decay of the sound. In other words, like when you push a note, how quickly it comes in, how quickly it fades out. So it's sort of doing an auto volume for you. Fine. Let's hear uh, that. Yeah, sure. Let me give you a little bit of something with it to balance it out. So that's set in a way where it's actually gating. Um, when a note comes in, it cuts out the one prior, which is really cool. You can also set it so it'll all kind of fade in simultaneously, right? Ooh. Tremolo, sorry. Yeah. And I can set that to be really funky too. I'll show you that really quickly. Yeah. kind of get like a little banjo effect going on there yeah it does sound yeah. kind of like a banjo comes in really quick and cuts out really quick right very cool yeah. other things that might be important uh for me with a a single coil guitar let me turn that fuzz on again for you hear all that noise if i have a noise suppressor here I can have it muted. So that can be a way to control volume. Um, other things we've got is our loopers. We both have loop pedals. We'll talk. We'll do a little bit at the very end with those to show you about it. Um, EQ pedals are another cool thing. Those uh, EQ is controlling, you know, what frequencies are highlighted. Uh, in your sound. So that could be another one. Uh, compression. Now let me show you a little bit about how compression works. Um, basically that's controlling the dynamics. It typically is squashing the top and then bringing the bottom uh, up. So that means the loudest stuff are reduced in volume and the quietest stuff are brought up. So it does usually introduce a little bit of noise, but it's also super crucial to getting like a funk kind of sound. So, that's without It's for my guitar, it gets that really plucky sound out. So compressors are fun. I actually all leave mine on all the time. As a single coil guitar, uh, my volume output is kind of low. So I use it to kind of boost my signal uh, in general. Mm. Um, Let's see. Yeah, and Jesse already talked a little bit about clean boost. So yeah, we're, we're going to show you looping at the end because that is easily a good uh, clinical application. Um, but let's see. We can get into some of the time-based stuff. But yeah, actually, let's do modulation next. Yeah, let's go modulation. So modulation is definitely a sound you've heard in music. Chorus is used a lot. Other examples would be things like auto wah, filter, wah wahs, phasers, tremolo, which you just saw briefly, um, not even intentionally on Jesse's part, but tremolo is modulation where the volume goes in and out. So that's what, 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 what. Um, 
And uh, basically what you need to know about modulation pedals is that they do something that air quotes modulates your signal. So um, famous examples are gonna be things like, I mean like the 80s was like drenched in chorus, right? So you've got, uh, let me turn the effect level way up. Purple rain, purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. Only wanna see you, baby, in the purple rain. Um, what is it? A lot of the police songs have it a lot. So let me show you, like, uh, the, and what I'm using here is the Boss Super Chorus, the blue one, the light blue one. So you get like. And you could play every breath you take. Like, right? You could just strum it, but it hits a lot differently when you play it with that effect. Another famous example would be. And he turns the rate or the depth way up. So it's. Uh, so Nirvana makes it on the list again. So what about you? Let's show us again tremolo, uh, yeah. Jesse, and then what else you've got on your board over there? Well, I'm, you know, I'm certainly, I really appreciate you having the, uh, the musical examples there because it's really, the context is so cool to hear like, oh yeah, I, I, you know, now I'm, I know this when I hear it. And I think that's what it comes down to is like starting to identify some of these effects in context. So when we hear you know, client sharing a recording, whatever it might be, we go, oh yeah, I, I know exactly what's going on here. I know how we can begin to not necessarily even recreate it, but like start to emulate a similar sound. And I know I get into that a lot with clients, like with using auto-tune, for example, which yeah. is, you know, um, it's really like has a certain effect right now, I think that um, a client might gravitate towards. So the same thing, you know, as you were playing some of those examples there, I'm like, oh yeah, you're taking me right into And it's like, yeah, you get, you get that smile. And like, we talk so much about patient preference. Uh, but the thing is like, it's, it's not just preferred just because it's a song, like right. the whole tonal characteristic is why it's preferred. So, um, it's funny to me because it's like, if you, if you're a music therapist that wants to die on that hill of patient preference, then why are you not also really digging into uh, being authentic and being uh, giving the music integrity? Do you always need to have a pedal board with you to do it? No. But if I'm recording something with a, a client, if, um, if I have the ability, I will do it. Uh, but yeah. So let's see what, what do you have on your board before we get into the time-based? Sure. Sure. And, and the other thing I was going to say about that as I'm getting stuff on here is I also think, you know, it can be so it can be so textural that for me, it also changes the way that I play. Right. Yeah. So like I'm throwing on, I just threw on a chorus right here. Um, Let me pin your video again. I feel like the signal's still a little low. No, that's pretty good. All right, cool. Um, so threw on this chorus here and and again you can change the depth of that to your liking right which pedal is that is so that that's chase the bliss? that's the chase bliss warped vinyl which um, you know, it's probably on the higher end as far as like pedals go, but I think that really any any sound can get some of the sounds that are coming out of this pedal, or rather any pedal can get some of the sounds coming out of this pedal. 
Um, but I love the name of it. It's called the Warped Vinyl. And for me, that's like an effect that I really gravitate towards in chorus is that this kind of warble is kind of like warm, just kind of gooey sound that, that really stretches out your playing. Like I think of The Cure and I think of um, maybe The Smiths and bands like that where, again, the guitar almost just becomes this really textural thing, right? Yeah. And like what you're saying, for example, is like normally on electric guitar, I don't strum too much. But like right when you're kind of doing that, um, you know, nice like dreamy chorus sound, suddenly that strum is not so harsh. It kind of buffers that sound and makes it like nice to strum along and you can get that, the cure, you know, sound. Show us tremolo again. Sure, let's get into that tremolo again. So tremolo is the effect of uh, cutting on and off volume. Uh, and they, it's been controlled in different ways. slow on there right but. yeah it's nice let's think of some famous examples of tremolo um there's a lot of i don't have tremolo on my board i have an old uh, amp that has tremolo built into it so i use that when i really want to get the tremolo sound but some famous ones are uh, a lot of ccr so like southern rock country um are a lot of like kind of some of those very classic examples but the most like famous one i can think of in modern music is uh boulevard of broken dreams the very beginning i walk this lonely road um that sound how he's getting at the beginning of the song is just him chunking on a chord and the tremolo just and you can Tremolos can be very harsh and, you know, the cuts can be very abrupt or it can be like, uh, you know, a little uh, subtler. So that's another one to listen for. I think when you listen to music, it doesn't get used as much nowadays, but I think it's a great effect. Yeah. And again, just like you said, you know, these things can go from like sort of more subtle textural effects to choppy rhythmic effects. Yeah. Right. So there's there's no... I, I like to think that even though we're showing this range of pedals, you know, get in there with any single one of them and there's a range of sounds that you can get out of them. Delay is the sound of an echo and some famous, uh, the most, to me, one of the most famous bands that use this super well uh, is U2. So let's see if I can get it. So without delay, this sounds like this. Let me turn that chorus down, hold on. That's without delay, but when you add the delay, you get this crazy. was another popular song that came out that actually sounds kind of similar it's oh don't you dare look back just keep your eyes on me i said your whole that's a hard one to do that riff at the same time but um yeah so that's a another popular example uh delay is used in almost every modern popular recording so you're gonna hear delay, you're gonna hear reverb in everything. It's just the amount that you hear, basically. Uh, so show us a little bit. You've got a crazy delay pedal. You've got the count to five. I do. Oh yeah, that's that's a wild one. And then you have, do you have another delay pedal too? Yeah. So I'm mostly using this gear, which is the it's called the Collider. It's a combined uh, reverb and delay pedal. And it's kind of nice because you know you're getting the the time based effects together there. So Go ahead and show us the difference then on, on that pedal. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Nice. 
Nice. And that can go, that we can stretch that out now, right? Yeah, and some of the, yeah, what he's gonna mess with some of the parameters, you can change how loud the repeats are. You can change things like uh, how long it repeats. Do you just hear it once? So is it like a rockabilly echo? Do, 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 or is it like crazy, spacey, repeating a lot? Um, you'll hear this a lot. A lot of pop music, the vocalist has a lot of uh, delay. A very famous person that uses it a lot is uh, Post Malone has a lot of delay on his vocals, uh, especially his sung parts rather than his, like, his rap parts. Mm -hmm. Cool, so keep going. What else do you got for us? So you get that cool effect of messing with the time. Yeah. There, right? All right. And then you've got this bananas pedal, the count of five. So cool. <laughs> so it's kind of like delay, but also weird modulation and pitch shifting. So essentially what's happening there, right, is it's, um, like you said, it's delaying the sound, but it's also, it's shifting it up. And then what's cool is that it's, it's also able to, you can control the amount that it feeds back into itself. So you um, essentially can have it delaying the pitch delay again as a pitch delay and kind of you get into these little chirpy kind of bird like sounds and again it can be incredibly rhythmic or textural so cool. uh, it's really fun and then yeah speaking of pitch um there's also this here which is the pitchfork and i'll just run through a couple things on that really quickly that's a lot of pitch shifting hold on oh that is super cool <laughs> <laughs> adding on a different octaves, right? Nice. It can become just bass, right? Which is pretty cool. Which could be great. You know, if somebody's already learning guitar but doesn't want to buy a bass, that could be a way that they could get a bass sound for a recording. Yeah. Uh, very useful. So, while he gets set up for that, basically uh, give us a nice cool like ambient thing. And uh, basically, just so you know, a looper can be used in all kinds of ways. You can loop rhythmic things. You can snap and pop and you know do muting on the strings and make yourself basically like a drum loop. You, can, you could stick other instruments into it and loop vocals or whatever. But a looper basically is exactly what it sounds like, like the way Ed Sheeran builds his performances with just himself on his acoustic. You basically, by pressing on one of the buttons, you create a loop, and by pressing on it again, you can add layers. So Jesse's going to do something cool and just make like a crazy ambient thing, but you can also do you know straight ahead rhythmic things with it as well. So go ahead, Jesse. correct look there's Jesse he's no longer playing <laughs> look mom no hands so let's add in some more uh, effects there
very cool. Um, basically, with that loop pedal, you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to loop a James Brown song and lead a group with, do I feel good, -da 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 -da, and you wanted to loop different parts, you could do something like that. You know, you can also make those cool textures. So what you need to know is we've spent quite a bit of money on our pedal boards. Uh, they can, you know, cost a lot. Um, you can spend quite a bit, but there are budget options. We put a lot of different budget pedal brands on the PDF, but you can also always reach out to us. Um, we'll be happy to, you know, if you want a certain type of pedal, ask us and we can tell you like that's an easy email and things like that um other than that recreative experiences for recreating music preferences that's what i would say if you're going to do a creative approach uh using a looper pedal like we said to make um you know, group leading that pitch modulation pedal you could do bass lines so you could do all kinds it, i mean it's limitless that's that's also kind of the problem uh, so <laughs> Uh, other than that, you know, we're happy to help you with, if you want to set up a time to do a lesson to get, get a pedal board together or buying your first pedal or what to do, uh, there's not necessarily a best first pedal. It's what do you need? Uh, so, you know, for you, it might be a tuner. It might be distortion. It might be the count of five because you want to make really crazy, uh, sounds and things like that. So that is pretty much it. Any, uh, parting wisdom for them, Jesse? Well, you know, I think the last thing that I wanted to share that we didn't talk about, and maybe this will be something to explore in further videos, is um, for me, like we said, they're called guitar pedals, but I don't think it stops there. Um, I've had a lot of fun personally running microphones, drum machines, uh, keyboards, um, you name it, you know, headphones. At my first band I was in, I, I was the synth player, but I played like a battery powered keyboard through guitar pedals. Um, so, cool. you know, and I think the, the options are really pretty open and, uh, and that's part of the fun and, and creative, um, part of this. So yeah, absolutely reach out to us, you know, let us know ideas that you might have ways that we can kind of help in, in making those, uh, come to fruition and thanks for tuning in. Yeah, sounds, sounds great. You all remember there will be more Tech Nook stuff coming out. You can reach out to us if you want lessons or just want help or anything. Other than that, we both are nerds and we will keep doing this. So there will be more things. So even if you just want to see more things. So Jesse and I are now friends and we will make more videos. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, reach out if you have any questions. All right. All right later, everybody. Happy jamming. All right.